All right, ladies and gentlemen, here I am. This is uh, Lieutenant Stephen Rogers. I'm here tonight for our Campaign for America broadcast. As usual, I'm going to wait a few minutes, and then we're going to get rolling at about 6.30. So that's in about two minutes, and uh, we're just wait waiting for our uh, viewers to populate our YouTube. Now, when I look this way, we're on YouTube, and when I look this way, we are on Facebook Live. Uh, I got to tell you, folks, uh, as we're waiting for our viewers, the number of people viewing these uh, broadcasts has been quite impressive. I, I tell you, when we started these broadcasts, I just didn't believe that the number of people would actually tune in, especially at the 6.30 hour, but they are. But what's more interesting is the emails I'm getting, uh, especially from police officers and their families. And they're supporting uh, just about everything that I've been saying and perhaps everything that you all have been saying with regard to the incidents that have been happening around the country. So I've got more of that. As we wait, we're going to launch in about a minute. Uh, I've got more <clears throat> to share with you as to what has been going on around the country, uh, what is to come, what we are to expect. And then I've got some other news with regard, how to, to, with regard to how this socialist agenda, folks, is just moving and moving and moving and progressing, progressing and progressing right before our very eyes. A socialist agenda, folks, that's going to affect your kids, especially if they're on their way to college. It's just stunning. All right, it's 6.30 p.m. here in the great, well, here in the communist state of New Jersey. And I do not say that lightly. We are still under lockdown. And for whatever reason, I do not understand. But I'll tell you a little story as to exactly what the governor is planning or has planned for the protesters. This is really going to drive you nuts, folks. But let's talk about one thing that is now going on, now going on as you and I speak. There are police officers all over the country patrolling their streets and responding to crimes. I've had an opportunity to speak to many of them during the past couple of weeks, as most recent as yesterday, as most recent as this morning, I should say. And police officers are telling me, and I will say this tonight when I'm on Fox News. By the way, I'll be on 11 o'clock, I believe, with Shannon Bream. Police officers have decided to do two things. One, replace proactive policing methodologies to with reactive, meaning you could forget about any uh, attempt to prevent crime. What they're going to do is they're going to wait to get the call and then they're going to go to the crime scene and clean up the mess. That's reality, folks. That is exactly what the socialists want police to do. They want them to get out of the way and they want the psychologists and sociologists to handle most of the problems that they have in these cities. So once again, let me repeat this and it's all legal. All right. They have changed the policing techniques in many cities, but the police officers themselves, the rank and file, are now going into what we call a reacting, a reactive policing methodology, meaning they get a call to respond to a crime and they go. What do they do the rest of the time? They wait to get the call. In the past, it was proactive. You drive around, you try to get some information from people, you dig up all kinds of things where you're able to perhaps track down some bad people. That's not happening anymore. Not happening anymore. Which means that the bad guys, they're going to get away with a lot. Now, as I shared with you yesterday, it is a fact that the New York City Police Department, serving the number one terrorist target on the face of the earth, has disbanded its anti-crime unit, has disbanded its uh, uh, plain clothes units. And that, apparently, what I'm hearing is going to be the rule of thumb across the country and a, large, and a lot of these police departments. So remember, it used to be proactive, now it's reactive. But what is more interesting with regard to how the rank and file are responding, the cops, they're gonna do their job, but thousands are now retiring, thousands are seeking early retirement, and thousands, folks, thousands who were set to go to police academies around the country, not gonna happen, not gonna happen. And it's not only myself who has had a long, distinguished career in law enforcement, but many of my colleagues and friends across the country who are cops. We're a close-knit family, you know, the blue family. But they have suggested to young men and young women never to put a blue uniform on in this country until the damn socialists are defeated. Why spend your entire life trying to help people and serve people and do the best you could to keep our cities and our towns and our people safe. When the government itself, your leaders, are not going to keep you safe. Because by 
introducing police reform bills and laws that do not hinder a police officer's, that, that hinders a police officer's ability to do their job rather than help them. And then their rules and regulations that they create when you employ them causes them to prosecute you. Well, you know what? Things change. But here's what's happening. Tactical retreat. Legal, it's lawful, and it's summed up in this one sentence I'm going to talk to you about. Police officer arrives on the scene. He sees some sort of violent crime going on. The police officer tactically retreats for his own safety, which means he or she will run behind a car, run behind a doorway, but they will tactically retreat until such time, for lack of a better illustration, they hear one shot get fired, and then they engage. Unfortunately, that shot might be fired at the victim. The victim could get killed, or that shot could be fired at the cop, and the cop could get killed. You just got to hope that the person who fires that one shot misses its target. But you could be sure that police officers are no longer going to fire the first shot. They're going to run, they're going to hide, and that's not saying that they're going to run and hide because they're cowards. They're not. They'll run into that danger as, as fast as you could imagine. But they're not going to any longer run into situations, and they should not run into situations that will cost them their jobs, their pensions, their lives. It just isn't worth it. I've received information from a couple of cops earlier that they had already responded to some calls. I won't tell you which state, but it's all over the place now, regarding domestic violence. And they called their headquarters and said, look, send a social worker. We're not arresting anybody. We don't care what's happening in there. Somebody's getting killed. Of course, we're going to go in. We're going to do our best to prevent it. But we're not arresting nobody. We're not arresting anybody. Until we hear screams, until we hear something, it's not even worth going in. This is the way it's going to be, folks. Get used to it. I said just last week that the blood of crime victims will be shed in the streets of this country like never before. Compliments of the Democrat Socialist Party. This is exactly what they want, folks. Police officers across the country will do their job, and they'll do it according to law. And when the law says you can tactically retreat, then do it. Do it. If a person fights you and they're a felon, let them go. Just let them run. And then when they shoot somebody and kill somebody or fire a gun at you, then you take the necessary action. Why on earth stop any motor vehicles anymore? Folks, I tell you, I've told cops, you know, I used to, I would stop uh, cars that had overdue inspection stickers, speeding, all sorts of motor vehicle violations. And that's what would lead to finding drugs and guns and all sorts of bad stuff in cars from bad guys. Because you're running a, a, a criminal history check on them. And you're finding out that they're either on probation or that they committed some crime. I've told cops, don't even do it anymore. And cops have told me they're not. Don't, don't forget your motor vehicle violations. Let the, let the meter maids bring the money into the uh, treasuries. In fact, meter maids might be in trouble in the future. They may be charged with profiling. They, I'm not kidding, folks. This is how bad it's gotten. It's gotten bad. Gotten so bad. And I heard this yesterday. And this is true, because it's out there in the press, from what I understand, and, and I have more than one friend told me. It's gotten so bad that not only the statues are coming down, not only history is being rewritten, not only graffiti and destruction of our historical monuments is being done, but they've demanded, they, the Democrat socialists, have demanded that Aunt Jemima be taken off of pancake mix boxes. Now, Aunt Jemima we grew up with. Aunt Jemima is an African-American woman who was on a pancake mix box. She wanted to be there. If you read about the history of Aunt Jemima, what a role model, you would be impressed. And that's not enough. There apparently is a cartoon on Nickelodeon. They got a cartoon where I think there's about a dozen dogs, cartoon dogs, and they're cops. And a German Shepherd, from what I understand, or another type of big dog is a policeman. He has a police cap on. And I would assume, I, I've never seen this. I only saw the uh, newsreel on it as to what's happening. And the other dogs are his deputies. And they go around and they, they don't know violence or nothing like that. But uh, from what I understand, they're, they're just showing through cartoons what policemen do. It's a cartoon. There has been a demand to take that off the air. Why? 
because the German Shepherd is involved as a cartoon figure with a police cap on. And then the worst. Those of you who are my age, you're going to remember a cartoon called Elmer Fudd. Elmer Fudd, a farmer, from what I remember. Again, good kids cartoon. But Elmer Fudd has violated what some say civil rights of certain people. Elmer Fudd, a cartoon. Elmer Fudd, a farmer from out west, was walking around with a rifle. He's a farmer. He's a hunter. Or apparently they put up a big stink over Elmer Fudd and they're either removing him from the uh, uh, television or they're going to change through graphics the gun into a, a stick or a branch. Folks, this is no longer a joke. We are seeing the, seeing the progression, and I'm going to say it every time I'm on the air, because now it's getting darn frightening. We saw it by taking God out of our schools, taking religious activities away from some of our municipalities, from not allowing us as most recently to even go to church because of a riot virus. And I got to tell you, folks, something's wrong here, at least here in New Jersey. We're still under lock and key here. And the governor wants us to celebrate because he gave us permission, permission to exercise our constitutional rights. Imagine that. The only day I'm going to celebrate is when we remove this guy from office. And that's going to be in November of 2021. But before that happens, we got a lot of work to do. We got to remove every Democrat socialist from office across the country. Well, that's for another time and another story. So anyway, tactical retreat is now going to be the policing methodology that cops are going to use across the country. So when you hear the screaming and the muggings increase and you hear the bloody murders in Chicago increase, the police are going to respond. But when they respond, I don't think you're going to see any of them running into danger as they used to. Because, frankly, the cops are not now and have never been afraid of the bad criminals. But now they are afraid of the bad politicians. And to be frank with you, it's very, very difficult to find a good politician. It really is. Because I'm going to ask you folks to do something. I'm going to ask you just to sit back and think, gee, I know these Democrat socialists, Adam Schiff, Maxine Waters, the Speaker of the House, and I could go on and on with a list because we know them as speaking up as, as, as bad as they are, they're speaking up for the Democrat socialist agenda. Now, let's go down the list of the Republicans who are speaking up for capitalism and speaking up for freedom and liberty. I got the list right here, folks. Okay, here's the list. Donald J. Trump, President of the United States. We begin with him. Donald J. Trump, President of the United States. Okay. Donald J. Trump, President of the United States. Okay. Okay. That's it. That's it, folks. Where are the Republicans standing up for our police in mass with a loud voice? They're afraid. And, you know, I, I always get, um, let's put it this way, I get criticized from my own party people. Oh, you know, you're coming down too hard on us. We've got elections coming out. Can you tone it down? No, I cannot. And I will not. One thing you, you, could, you could be sure of, nobody's going to buy me and promise me stuff. Because when I talk, I talk the truth, and I talk plain language. And I want to be able to communicate with the people the way you should be communicating with them. And that's truthful and honesty. And instead of sitting down, cowering in a corner like you are, and yelling at your TV as a politician saying, gee, uh, somebody should get up and do it, do something about this. Somebody should say something. I'm talking about these politicians because that's what they do. I've been in private conversations with a lot of them in the past saying, boy, I'd love to I'd love to hit those Democrats and socialists, but, you know, I'm not going to have any backing. I've got legislation to pass. I can't say this or say that. Why? I'll stir the pot. Stir the pot. The darn pot is, pot is boiling over, for goodness sakes. Boiling. And innocent people are getting burned. Innocent police officers are getting burned. Because you, as the person I elected to office, don't have the sheer guts and courage to stand up and to stop worrying about your political career and start worrying about the survival of our people, of our police officers, of the minority crime victims all over the country because they're getting a beating and of this great United States of America. 
what is it going to take, folks? That's the question I'm asked all the time. Was it? What is it going to take for the Republican Party officials in this country to stand up like the president has and do what must be done to address the problems that we're facing? So their answer is, oh, we're setting up a commission. We're going to have a committee. We're going to have an investigation. My whole life, that's all I've seen politicians do. They're great at setting up committees and commissions and doing this and doing that. How about setting up a committee and commission, if you want one, to investigate the United States Congress? You're pointing fingers at innocent cops. You're pointing fingers at innocent people in the minority communities who are being tortured and beaten and shot to death, at least in Chicago. How about a committee and a commission to investigate the sexual misconduct that cost taxpayers by the millions in the United States Congress? Right, folks? Remember that? Boy, did that get very quick. Did that go down the tubes? Man, we don't want to go there. Oh, Lieutenant Rogers, don't go there. We got an election coming up. We don't want to go there. Yeah, how about we investigate the United States Congress, and you're talking about cops being transparent. You're talking about police officers, everything they do being publicized. Well, how about we get the United States Congress to publicize, to be very transparent, who, what, when, where, and why, and the United States Congress was involved in sexual assault, sexual misconduct, or whatever they've been involved in. How about we do that, folks? How about we do that? Huh? How about we do that? I think we ought to do that, folks. I think we ought to do that. The fact of the matter is, folks, is that that'll never happen. That'll never happen. I'm getting some text and emails in, folks. This is what I'm looking at. And I'm going to share with you a few of these questions. And that's what I have been asking for. The fact of the matter is, folks, is that, okay, that was a text. Apparently, uh, I have been rescheduled for Fox, so I won't be tonight. Okay, so good. I could use, <laughs> use the rest. So anyway, so that's what we see happening. Let's investigate everybody. Let's have the cops. We got to lay out there every single complaint that came into them, even if they walked across somebody's lawn. Believe me, it's that serious. But when it comes to being transparent, with the records of politicians, nah, we're not going to do that. So, folks, how are we going to do it? How are we going to get our side, our side? And it's not saying that there's a good side and a bad side. I'm saying there's a right side and a wrong side. And the wrong side are the socialists and the Democrats. I happen to believe the right side, and I'll prove to that to you in a minute. Remember what I told you last night? I prove everything. All right? I always have facts. The uh, fact of the matter is, is that we are on the right side. Because we're for lawful assembly, not lawlessness. We're for freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of worship, right to life, right to bear arms. That's what we believe in. Liberty and justice. Democrat socialists believe in the rules and the regulations established by Marx, Lenin, and Stalin. Make no mistake about it. All right, so tactical retreat. Remember that as the crime rate goes up. Now, how about this one, folks? We're going to go through some headlines. If you're Jewish, you might want to hear this. And the reason why I say if you're Jewish is because I have continuously and will continue to support the nation of Israel. I will continue to speak up for those of Jewish heritage in this country and around the world. I will continue to always stand shoulder to shoulder with anyone, anyone who is of Jewish heritage, because many of them from way, way back, when I was a young police officer, stood up for everybody in this country when it came to liberty and justice for all. And that's a lot of things that the Jewish people in this country did that no one really knows about. But we're going to start talking about that. And by the way, by the way, folks, rewriting history and say, saying there was no Holocaust. Remember what I shared earlier? Think about this, folks. They're taking away our freedom of religion, our freedom of worship. They're getting in the educational system. They're corrupting young people young with what? They're not talking about American history. They're talking about history as it relates to socialism, the doctrines of Stalin, the doctrines of Marx, and the doctrines of Lenin. That is what's going on. Let me bring up a case in point just a few days ago. Outrage has erupted at Florida State University after the new student Senate president was found to have made racist and anti-Semitic 
statements online, including, get this, comparing Israel to Nazi Germany. How do you compare Israel to Nazi Germany? But this is what's going on in our colleges, folks. Can anyone in their right mind really compare Israel to Nazi Germany? But it gets worse. I'm not going to mention the guy's name. I'm just going to say the student who is Palestinian American recently replaced a previous president of the student Senate who was expelled. Get this. This kid's expelled. And who is this kid? He was the Senate president who expressed conservative Catholic views. So the Jews in the country and the Catholics in the country are now under assault. By who? Democrat socialist. Whether this new president of the Senate at this school is Palestinian or not, to me at this point, is immaterial. Of course, that might lead him to say certain things leaning towards what he believes in. But what is important to me and what is of more material is a person like this following a socialist agenda in our schools, in our colleges. I, can't, I just can't begin to tell you, folks, how many of my friends who saw their young kids four or five years ago graduate high school and went to some of the best colleges in the country, and they're coming home talking very badly about capitalism, very badly about President Trump. I mean, very, very badly about the United States of America. And these parents, I know, they want to pull their hair out of their heads. How did this happen to my child? Because our educational system across the country has been infiltrated by communists, socialists, and Democrats who support the communist socialist agenda. And atheists. God forbid you mention God. Oh, my goodness, if you mention God in school, you're going to be thrown out. And I'm not exaggerating, because I've heard that. Two years ago, I was speaking on college campuses, invited to college Republican clubs. And I remember walking in the building of some of these hallways of these colleges, and I could see that the college Republican club had flyers up with a picture of President excuse me, Trump, picture of me and some other people on the walls, and some of them were torn in half, some of them had graffiti on them, some of them were torn down. Why? Because the culture in some of these colleges is not about freedom and liberty, the culture in some of these colleges is about socialism, communism, and that's where we're headed. So here you have a college kid, Israel, Israel, he compares to Nazi Germany. How do you figure that? I don't see and never saw the Israelis send innocent men, women, and children to death camps. I heard about Nazi Germany doing that. I never heard about Israelis invading towns and putting a symbol on people, identifying them as their, with their ethnicity and then ex executing them in front of their loved ones in the streets like the brutal Nazis did when they took every Jewish person and put a star on them. Right? I think it was a yellow star, and then they started beating them and shooting them in front of their loved ones. Never seen Israel do that. So how do you, how do you in a college, compare Israel to Nazi Germany? And, and then kind of state, well, you know, they're kind of the same in one. You know what? The person who said that is out of his mind. But you know what's troubling? The person, which is the college professors, and maybe the college president and the rest of these socialists that are running our colleges and schools. They're more crazy. There's something wrong with these people. But that's what they're teaching. Because they hate our country, folks. They hate our country. It took me a long time to get there to believe that a people raised in America, just reaping in the millions of dollars and reaping in all the benefits, it took me a long time to come to the conclusion that they really hate us. They really hate this country. So that's what's going on. Now, I tweeted something out earlier. Remember I told you last night I liked my tweets? Well, I, I tweeted something out tonight that got a lot of people upset. A lot of people upset. A lot of Democrats upset. How dare you tweet something like what you tweeted out? And what I tweeted out, folks, I don't have it with me, but it's out there. But I can explain it in a minute. I tweeted out, folks, 
that the Democrat Party, they're out there endorsing the taking down of statues and the defacing of our monuments and rewriting history and on and on and on. They're, they're doing a lot of destruction. Why? Because they, they're saying that all of these people, and those of us, by the way, who support them, are racist. Terrible people. Terrible people. Now, to me, it's history. And to me, if this is history, maybe people need a reminder, whether it be a statue or whatever, that these are the people that created the problems that we have, historically had, with regard to race or otherwise. But that's American history. To suggest that the Washington Monument come down and the Jefferson Memorial come down, well, folks, you know what? These people who lived in their times, those were their times, and what they did was wrong and terrible. But these guys founded the darn country, for goodness sakes. So what about the good? What about the good, folks, that people do? But the Democrat socialists don't want to hear this. And I'll tell you what else they don't want to hear, because I tweeted this out tonight that what we ought to do is maybe follow the Democrat Party lead and demand that they change their name because of racism. Because, folks, it is the Democrat Party. Or have we forgotten this? It is the Democrat Party that was the party that endorsed and embraced slavery in this country. The Democrat Party was born in the South, folks and they endorsed and embraced slavery. That's why they went to war with the Union. Now, one might say, well, you're wrong, Lieutenant. That's not true. Well, forget my word for it. Let's just go to the History Channel and History.com, which is a very, very reputable, reputable organization. And I'll read to you what they say. The Democratic Party is one of two major political parties in the United States and the nation's oldest existing political party. After the Civil War, the party dominated in the South due to its opposition to civil and political rights for African Americans. I, need that, I gotta read that again, folks. Democratic Party was always in opposition to the civil rights and the political rights of African Americans. Did we forget it took the Republican Party and a president, a Republican president named Abraham Lincoln to free the slaves? We forgot, right? They forgot. They didn't forget. They just don't want to talk about it. They got to change the name of their party, folks. Right? Now, when I said and tweeted out, well, anybody who supports the Democrat Party is a racist. Well, how dare you? How dare you call me a racist, Lieutenant Rogers? Just because I'm a Democrat doesn't mean I'm a racist. Well, then don't call me a racist, all right? Don't call me or any Republican a racist if we're supporting President Donald Trump. You see, folks, education. This is why we do this. Education, all right? This is what you need to know, and you can throw it right back in their faces. Right back in their faces. Now, everything I share with you, we send out a monthly intelligence report and briefing with this information on it. All you got to do is email us. It's for free. We'll, we'll email you. We'll put you on our distro list. We send 10000 a month out. We'll send you this information. This is great, isn't it? This is history. But they want to rewrite it. They want to erase this. They don't want to teach your kids that their party, their party just about, in my view, founded slavery. Yep. They were the ones, the Democrats. History Channel. Not me. History Channel. Professors. Probably liberal ones, but they can't get away from the truth. So when the Democrats complain about the Republicans being racist and on and on and on, they better look in the mirror, which leads me to how on earth, folks, how on earth can anybody, anybody support the Democrat Socialist Party is beyond me. I've heard some, uh, I have heard from, I have heard from rank and file members of police departments after I blasted away at their unions. And it was one one card I actually got. Big letters. T-H-A-N-K-Y-O-U. Rank and file cops. They've had it with their union leaders, many of them across the country. And I hope they stand up and they start throwing these union leaders out. 
In fact, I've heard some officers think about suing their state delegates for misrepresenting them because there was never a vote, according to some police officers that I've talked to, in some states, there was never a rank and file vote to endorse political candidates. It was always the, the um, heads, the leaders of these unions who sat down with the delegates and browbeat them or promised them into supporting these politicians, these Democrat socialists who are now destroying them. I think the teachers union does the same thing, don't they? I don't know if the teachers vote. It doesn't matter because the union leaders, they're the ones that are getting the rewards. You're a teacher? Come on, you can't be a teacher today. You're a cop. You know you can't be a cop. Well, how do you end up endorsing? How does your, uh, uh, you know, your union end up endorsing Democrat socialists who are now destroying you? Because the union leaders get the crumbs, folks. Or get, get the meat. I'm sorry. They get the meat. You just get a few crumbs off the table. Yeah, that's exactly right. I decided to start talking to people like this because that seems to really get through and gets under the nerves of Democrats and socialists. Now, I got a question for you, Democrats and socialists that are watching. My goodness, I got enough mail from you. Why are you watching me? Why are you watching this broadcast if it's getting you all fired up? So here's what I'm going to recommend you do if you watch the broadcast. When you're done, go to your local CVS. Go to Rite Aid. Take your, uh, take your Medicare card or your health benefit card. Get yourself a, a pill that'll calm you down. That'll relax you, okay? Don't get all worked up. Don't have high blood pressure. I have a heart attack over what I'm saying. But maybe you could do something else. Just don't watch. Just don't watch. Why do you watch? You see, folks, they watch because deep down inside, deep down inside, they're troubled. They are troubled over where their party's going. How about this? There's an organization called Jexit. Yeah, Jexit. That's what it's called. And that is a group of Jewish men and women based in Florida who we're working with very closely to welcome American patriot Democrats and independents, welcome them to walk away, walk away and join the a little less than a million Democrats who have walked away from the Democrat Socialist Party. How about having some courage and guts to do that? Instead of emailing me how terrible I am, how deplorable I am. My goodness, I'm deplorable. And every other name in the book that I can't mention. How about walking away? I did. Oh, yeah, I did. I was a Reagan Democrat. Me and old Ronnie boy in the old days, we were Democrats. And a lot of us, a lot of us were Democrats. Until we found the Democrats walked away from us. Then we became Republicans. We smartened up. And followed Ronald Reagan. And we were the ones that saw the sun rise morning in America and see it, saw America come back. And then we had a problem with Obama and the Democrats. And then here came Donald J. Trump. Just got a little message here. I like this. I can get messages on Facebook. Young lady says, I did the Jexit. There you go, folks. Somebody just told me that they did the Jexit. They walked away. Have the courage to do that. This organization, Jexit, is being headed up and terrifically managed by young Jewish men and women who are fighting for our liberty, fighting for our rights. They're not going to stand alone because with me is going to come, I know, thousands of people. Work with them to save this country. I can't believe it's already 7 o'clock. I can't believe it, folks. It's already 7 o'clock. Well, that's it for now. You know, I got to stick to it. But I hope I was able to share some good stuff with you. But I think the most important thing I shared with you tonight was right here. The history of the Democrat Party. Google it. Google it. And if you'd like to have our, I'll tell you what, folks, if you'd like to have our intelligence report, I am now going to put our email in. And by the way, uh, please follow us here on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. So just bear with me. And I'm going to do this mail at. Okay. Mail at Rogers for America. Ever see a, a host on a show do this, folks? This is pretty good. Yeah, that's because we're all the same in the end of the day, right? All right. So you're going to mail at Rogers for America dot US. Okay. Bingo. There you go. It's up here on YouTube. And uh, I, I can't put it here on Facebook, but it's Rogers for America dot US. Okay. And we'll post it when we pull this up. And then 
here is my Twitter account, okay? And you could do that. In fact, anybody listening to me on Facebook, could you put Rogers? I got, you got to love this type of live stuff, right? <laughs> I, got, I got to ask you to, to email here. Put up Rogers for America.us, R O G E R S F O R America.us. Uh, I'm sorry, mail at Rogers for America.us. Okay. And that will get you, uh, you email me and we'll get you the newsletter. And then we got at Lieutenant Rogers. Okay. So, all right. So here's my Twitter. People have it in at Lieutenant S T E V E N Rogers, R O G E R S. And we're going to do that. Okay. So, so my, Email. You want our intelligence report with what I just shared with you? That's mail at rogersforamerica.us. What I shared with you is rather interesting about the Democratic Party actually being the party that embraced slavery, that was fighting the North to keep the slaves, the Democrats. So when they tell us that we're racist and that all the statues they're taking down, they're taking down because they're racist, and all the graffiti and all the destruction because all the people who support these things are racist. They're the ones who are racist. That's their party. They're supporting it, not us. And then finally, folks, finally, those of you who have missed tonight's broadcast, it's going to be posted. We're going to have a watch party at 8 o'clock. We will have this broadcast. Tune in. Tune in, folks. You're going to like it. I certainly like it. All right. So remember, uh, cancel. I will not be on Fox tonight. We're going to probably go on Within the next uh, couple of days, I'll be on One America News tomorrow. We got a lot of work to do. By the way, Florida, stand by. We're on our way. We're going to be in Florida, meeting with Republican clubs all over the state since Florida is open. Uh, New Jersey's not. We're still under lock and key. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to escape, escape the state of New Jersey and get to Florida. Then from there, we're going to be going to Dallas. And we're going to be working with Republican candidates also there. Okay, so that's it, folks. So the end of it. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. This will be replayed. We're going to have a watch party with this broadcast in about a half hour. And we're going to post it on Facebook. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless the United States of America. And remember, our purpose in life is to love and glorify God forever. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America and our president.